How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams and over here we talk stocks. We focus on one thing. Always protect your profits. And today we're going to be talking about ChargePoint. I know it's been a minute. The stock has pulled back. We did post up a green day, but I want to make sure I keep you guys inside the loop, especially since Joe Biden came out with his speech and what his ambitions are. I won't waste any more time. Let's jump into the agenda. If you're new to this channel, I just want to let you know we have timestamps down below inside the description. But if you're a shareholder, or you're thinking about taking a position, I highly suggest you watch this full entire video video. So the first thing we're going to go over is a technical analysis. We're going to be taking a look at the overall price action. We want to know support. We want to know resistance. We want to know what it looks like in the bearish case scenario and as well as in the bullish case scenario. And then we're going to go on Fintel taking a look at the recent institutional ownership and short interest information. The reason why this is important because it does have an impact on the way the stock performs. And then we're going to take a look at the order flow distribution. We want to know the buying and the selling behavior on the retail side and as well is on the institutional side and then when all of that is done we'll be going into the final thoughts and as well as some more details so let's get to it so we're going to do a technical analysis for charge point let's see how it performed on the day so it ended up closing at 13 dollars being up 2.36 percent on the low it ended up testing 12 dollars and 40 cents and then on the high testing 13 dollars and 15 cents when we take a look at the volume stats on the day you can see we traded at 12.234 million shares and the average volume over 10 trading days is at 10.217 million shares. So we did have above average volume on the day and this contributed to the strength that we saw in the stock. Now, when we take a look at our chart, which is a daily chart, we can see from the RSI down below, it is at 39.35. And then when we take a look at our moving averages here on the chart, we are below the 200 day, the 100 day, the 50 day, and as well as the 21 day EMA. And like I've been saying in my previous videos, charge point is in a bear market but one thing that is very clear we're seeming to hold up the support right here around this $12 level we ended up seeing a high of $13.15 so for things to start looking bullish we need to at least reclaim the 21 day EMA which is around $14.15 and then make that move towards a 50 day where it'd be right around $17.43 but again considering the market conditions that we're in with growth stocks and so on and the 10 year yield that is spiking this will be difficult so this is why I wouldn't be surprised if we ended up visiting lows back here to when we broke through the 12 area and got down to $11.43. So it's definitely something we're going to continue to keep an eye on. But you guys know already, I do believe in the long-term prospects of this company. So this is why I don't mind adding on the dips when it's trading in this particular area. I haven't added as of late. I'm kind of waiting to see if it dips even further. But for the most part, if you want to look for that reversal, we definitely need to get above the 21-day EMA and be able to at least get back to the $16 area. So we're going to take a look at the recent institutional ownership and short interest information for charge points. So green rows indicate new positions while red rows indicate closed positions. So when we take a look at the recent filings for February the 8th, we have Capital Advisors Limited LLC that purchased six shares. And then we also have Austal Financial Partners Inc. with a closed position. We also see Swiss National Bank that purchased just over 393,000 shares. We also have SRS Capital Advisors Inc. that purchased one. 103 shares. We have Bank of America Corp that purchased going in with calls of a value of 11,400 shares. And a retirement planning company of New York, England purchased 200 shares. We have Perennial Advisors LLC that purchased 13,151 shares. And then we have Central Trust Company that purchased 100 shares. So institutions are definitely loading up on charge point. And then when we take a look at the short interest, the dark pool short volume ratio is at 51.38%. And then and for the dark pool short volume, it is just over 1.43 million shares. Scrolling down further on the page, the short shares availability is at 4.4 million, updated 21 minutes ago. And then for the short ball fee rate, it is at 0.49%. When we take a look at the history of the short volume ratio, we can see for the close of the fourth, it's at 51.58. And then for the close of the seventh, being at 51.38. So one thing this tells us, charge point does have short squeeze potential. So the moment we have more buying pressure coming into the stock, this is where you can look forward to seeing those moves to the upside. So now let's move on to the order flow distribution. 
Now let's take a look at the order flow distribution for charge points. So we see here on the inflow it's at 13.84 and then on the outflow it's at 41.01. So you can see clearly it was an outflow day. Taking a look at the breakdown, it was zero on the large, on the medium it was 7.69 and then on the small it was 6.15. Taking a look at the outflow side, you can see on the large it was 25 0.96 on the medium it was 8.13 and then on the small it was 6.92 taking a look at the large scale orders in the last five days you can see for today february the 8th it being that negative of 25.96 million that is crazy and the last time we had an outflow was on february the 2nd and then the three trading days prior to the 8th we had zero analyzing the numbers even further for the small scale orders that tends to represent the retail side we had more selling than we had buying. And then when we take a look at what happened on the medium, we had more selling than we had buying. And then when we take a look at the large represents whales, institutions, our funds, whoa, a lot more selling than we had buying, but we also didn't notice that from the large scale orders. And then when we take a look at the turnover ratio, it was at 3.70%. So despite all of the outflows that we had on the day, charge point was still fairly strong. And I think a big reason to do with that is in regards to Joe Biden and his ambitions. I will be sharing some more info inside of the final thoughts. So let's get into it right now. So for my final thoughts for charge point, first, let's go over the tweet that came from Joe Biden. So China has been leading the electric vehicle race, but that's about to change. We're building a convenient, reliable, equitable national public charging network. It'll make America more economically competitive and help us tackle the climate crisis at the same time. So this is definitely great news for a stock like ChargePoint, or I should just say the company as a whole. We already know that there's a lot of ambition and there's a lot of money behind this project to make sure as far as EVs are concerned, it's going to be adopted as the years go by. So this is why when I talk about ChargePoint, it's one of my high conviction plays. So I don't mind if the stock wants to dip because you guys know that I'm going to be adding to my position. I'm down to hold this stock for at least five years and I know I will be seeing a return on my investment. I know the company is not profitable as of yet but I'm down to wait. Now in regards to the price action what it's looking like I want to see if charge point could actually hold up the $12 level and if you're looking forward to seeing a reversal I want to see it get to the 21 day EMA which is around $14.50 15 cents and then it would have to make that move going to $16. If it wants to pull back going to let's say around 10 bucks or even going down in the single digits into nine bucks, like I said, you guys know I'm going to be loading the boat. Also, when we went on Fintel, taking a look at the recent institutional ownership, we could see from the filings, institutions have been loading up on shares. And we've been seeing this for quite some time. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you think this stock is gonna pull back the way it did and institutions, funds, and whales are not gonna load up on shares? If you think otherwise, and you are making a sad mistake. While retail is selling out of their positions, institutions are loading up. I'm gonna be using the same strategy because I don't mind getting this stock at a deal because I know there's a ton of upside. And when we took a look at the short interest information, it does continue to have short squeeze potential. So if we have more volume and buying pressure coming into the stock, this is where we could see those moves to the upside. But at the end of the day, this is a long-term play for me. If you're looking at charge point as a swing trade and you are down inside of your position, then let's be honest here. You should have been using a stop loss. You should have been using the right risk management. So this is why I want to emphasize this so you don't forget. So if you jump into a another play that you're looking to swing trade, then have a stop loss in place. Not every play that you jump into is going to be going in a direction where you want it to go. And before I close this video out, please keep an eye on the 10 year treasury yield. This does have an impact on growth stocks. And since charge point is a growth stock in the tech sector, and it's not profitable as of yet, it's going to be feeling some pain, just like many other plays that you have seen, but things will turn around. The market will improve. And this is where I can see there's upside in the play and you could actually do some more homework and more due diligence to see if this play would be right for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll be talking real soon.